uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them, all money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so in that, instead of having cash, anytime you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. Everything is in there, you know? And so they, they want a one world government controlled by them, Everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips, and they control people, and you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intentions. Eric, can you be specific about when you met Rockefeller, how it happened in these discussions? I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I made a video called Mad as Hell. And uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me and knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him and I liked him. And uh, uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts. And um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event and out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq, you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the new world order. And we'd go after Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, sure enough, later 9-11 happened. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And it's and there's gonna be this war on terror, uh, which is no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. He told you it was gonna be a hoax. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there's no question. He says, there's, there's gonna be war on terror. And he's just laughing. There's no, <laughs> who are we fighting? I mean, why do you think 9-11 happened and then nothing's happened since then? Do you think that our security is so great here that these people who pulled off 9-11, who were able to, can't knock down another plane? Come on, it's ridiculous. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this, war, this endless war on terror. And that's why we, the, and that was the first lie. And the next lie was going into Iraq, you know, uh, to uh, get Saddam Hussein out with his weapons of mass destruction. That was the next lie. Now, now specifically, this was a little over six years ago? This was... Uh, 11 months before 9-11. Yeah. And Nick Rockefeller, he's a lawyer, he is, he, he's become your friend over the previous years. And he's saying to you that there's going to be this big event, and then out of that we're going to have a war on terror, and it's just going to go on and on. Right. An endless war on terror without, without any real enemy. That you can never, so you can never define a winner. And, and uh, did he say that it's going to be perfect because you can't define an enemy? It just goes yeah, on. Yeah. He's because you can't define a winner. There's no winner there's no one to beat, so it goes on and on forever. And they can do whatever they want. They scare the hell out of the American public. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. 
It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Let's but, the truth, but the truth has to be, the truth has to come out. That's why I'm doing this interview. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. Then there's a war going on in Iraq because we invaded Iraq. People over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, it's a joke, you know. And until we discover what really happened on 9 11, and who was responsible for 9 11, because that's where the war on terror emanates from. That's where it comes from. It was 9 11 that allowed this war on terror to begin. And until we get to the bottom root of 9 11, the truth of 9 11, we'll never know about the war on terror. Aaron. Your business success starts with human resources that give you more, more expertise. Aaron, you said that he was, and I think it's important, and I know this about the Rockefellers, from Dr. Dennis Cuddy and many others, who literally, he'll be 20 years old in a lunch line at college, and there's David Rockefeller, and he hears here, I mean, they're experts at recruiting and getting what they call players, and that clearly he was, he, I mean, I want to make, make it specific and just get you to reiterate what you said last night. Uh, about you were, you got 30 percent of the vote. You were having an effect. You 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 made mad as hell. They knew that you started the Constitution Party. Yeah. They knew that you were uh, somebody who was taking action and getting things done. You already made some big films, had a lot of other successes. Right. So they were trying to recruit you, and, and, and didn't it come down to the point of, hey, we are here to recruit you, and don't worry, your chip's going to say, don't mess with us. You know, this guy's uh, don't touch. Yeah. Yes, that did happen. Now I was definitely being recruited. But it's more subtle than that. Well, your words. Just go through the process, and then, and then what he said. Well, well, what it is is, we remember we were friends, and we used to have. We used to go to my house a lot. We'd have dinner. We'd talk, and he'd, he'd tell me about business investments that he'd get involved in. You know, or they would help me with this business investment or that business investment. And was I interested in joining the Council on Foreign Relations? You know, I would have to get a letter to join them. But was I interested in that? And, uh, you know, just uh, just stuff, you know, leading you on. And, and uh, I, I used to say to him that I never really did that because well, that wasn't where I was coming from. You know, as much as I like you, Nick, you know, your ways and my ways, we're, the, we're on the opposite side of the fence. You know, I don't believe in enslaving people, you know, and... Um, and he would come back with, oh, I do? Well, it would be more like, you it's know... It's better for them. Well, it's more like, you know, um, how do I put it? It was like, what do you care about them? What do you care about those people? What difference does it make to you? Take care of your own life. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs. They're just people. You know, it was, it was just a lack of caring you know and that's just not who i was it was just sort of like cold you know it was just like cold you know and uh i said to him, what, what's the point of all this you have all the money in the world you need you have all the power you need what's the point you know what's the end goal and he said the end goal is to get everybody chipped to control the whole society to have the, to have the bankers the, the elite people you know, the bankers and some governor controlling the world. What, and, and, and I said, do all, do all the people in the Council on Foreign Relations believe this way you do? He said, no, no, no. You know, it, it, most of them believe they're doing the right thing. A lot of them believe it's better, it's better off being socialistic. You know, we have to convince people that capitalism, that socialism is really capitalism. Because America is becoming a socialist country. It's a communist country today. Well, one of the things they told me was that... Um, he brought, we were at the house one night, and uh, we, were talking, we were talking, and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want me, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all of the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you wanna know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, we couldn't tax half the population before Women's Lib. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. 
we can indoctrinate the kids how to think. Because it breaks up their family. The, the, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two primary, the primary reasons for women's life, which, which I thought up to that point was a noble thing. You know, when I saw their intentions behind it, where they were coming from when they created it, the thought of it, I saw, I saw the evil behind what I thought was a noble adventure. Thank you for watching Up TV too. Hi, right, Shalom. All right, first and foremost, I'd like to get all praise and glory, honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Wakakwadash. I'd like to say double honors to the elders, apostles, a great millstone, and peace of salutation to the Akim that's pushing with his word and truth and sincerity, all right? I uh, just got to plan this video about the, um, you know, Aaron Russo, which they killed him. You know, that, um, you know, how the, um, Rockefellers, which is the elite, is going to be pushing this chip all over the world, man, and all over the society. All right, and when the, uh, when the dollar crashed, that's when they were um, going to reveal this chip, according to the Bible. So, um, this title right here, I'm going to run it back. Run it back real quick. Um. <clears throat> Well, you're going to see it when I put it up. It says, um, it's the chip, it's the mark of the beast, and that's a question. So I'm going to get to the scriptures and prove that the chip is a mark of the beast, man. All right? Because when, uh, when uh, Russo, when he mentioned um, they're going to be chipping people and, and they're going to crash the dollar. And, and um, he said, everybody going to get chipped, rich, rich or poor, Okay. So that proved that the least been reading the scriptures, man. All right, no further ado. I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to Revelations chapter thirteen. Is that thirteen? Verse fifteen. It says, "And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should be should both speak." You know, one of the images of the beast is Caesar, uh, Cesare Borgia, you know, the fake Christ, you know, the white Christ. And uh, it says, should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. All right. So if you don't worship the image of the beast that Esau put out to this world, man, you want to get killed, man. All right. It says, and he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. So it's going to be. Low level and high level people receiving this mark of the beast, man. Okay. Um, it says that he causes all small and both small and great, okay. <clears throat> Rich and poor, free and bond, the ones that's on the streets and the ones that's in the prisons, okay, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So that's talking about the mark of the beast, okay? So we look up the word mark goes back to the Greek word karagma, means to stamp, a stamp and a printed mark of a mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the, as the badge of followers of the Antichrist. All right, for those that's the Antichrist, which is many Antichrists, according to 1 John 2 and 18, which I'm gonna get that next, okay? It says, the mark branded upon horses, which they're gonna be treating you people like horses, man. Because, you know, these animals getting branded, they're going to brand you people, man. They're like you, they, 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 these elites look at you people as cattle, man. Goyim, okay. It says, things carved, sculpture, given, graven work, idol, uh, idol, um, idolatrous, idolatrous image. Because the mark of the beast is basically, uh, 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 idol, idol, uh, idolatrous image if i could pronounce it right okay Ad idolatrous salakia image excuse me for that um <clears throat> con it says and he calls of all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead so they're gonna be putting these chips in people's foreheads and their right hand man 
okay? The RFID chip, okay? The mark of the beast, which is the chip, according to the scriptures. Because it's already been prophesied that, you know what I'm saying, the beast, the mark of the beast going to be out here, man. It's already out here. But the dollar ain't crashed yet, okay? Um, let me tell you what happened if you take the mark of the beast. This is Revelation 14 and 8. It says, and they follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. It's fallen. That great city. And that's talking about America. Okay. Because America is going to fall financially. And then everything's going to, anything's going to um, break loose. Like riots. You know what I'm saying? Um, killings and stuff like that. As soon as this dollar crash. I'll read it again. They say, and there follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. It's fallen. The great city. And that's America, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So America made all these nations, including our people, you know what I'm saying, drink the wine, drink that wine, which is that philosophy. Okay, that American dream, that American way. Okay. It says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, okay, karakma, which is the stamp. Okay, to imprint in his forehead or in his hand, it says the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which Yahweh Shemal Shai, right, which is poured out without mixture. So he's gonna give it to you. He gonna, he gonna give you this. He gonna give you this destruction, man. Uh, uh, with no filter, man. Okay, the Lord gonna destroy this place with no filter, man. Okay, all right, straight pure without mixture, man. Okay, he's gonna give it to you like he's gonna give it to you uncut and raw, man. Alright. If you take this chip. Alright. Um, it says into the cup of his indignation, which is righteous righteous anger, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, okay? And that fire and brimstone represents the um the ICBM missiles, which these uh these nations gonna shoot over here, man, because you know it ain't gonna be no salvation for those that take that mark, man. Okay. Um, let's go to First John. Then what's that? Four and eighteen. Two and eighteen, Slaki. It's um uh, two and eighteen. All right, just first John two and eighteen. Say, little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist, okay, shall come. Even now are there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So it's many Antichrists, man. Okay, it's many, it's many uh you know, opponents of uh, Hamashiach, which is a Messiah, okay? And um, a lot of these people that's on Antichrist, man, are going to take the chip. They're going to take the chip, man. Let's look at the word Antichrist. All right, it goes back to the uh, Greek word Antichristos, means the adversary of the Messiah, which is Hamashiach. So most of these people are adversaries, man. they adversaries of Hamashiach. And then you got got uh, these church folks, man, they're going to take the chip too. But they claim they love the Lord, love Jesus and all that, but y'all antichrists too. Y'all going to take that chip too. Right? Especially uh, black churches, man, where Jake be at, man. Okay, these Latino, so-called Latino churches, you so-called blacks, Latins, and Native Americans, but you, but you the biblical Israelites, going to take this chip, man. Okay? Alright? So... And then for those that don't take the chip, you know, um, you know, you know, you're gonna be saved, and you know, and uh, some some of us gonna get killed, man, for not taking the chip. All right. It says, uh, they went out from us. No, this go back. Let's go back. Revelations 14 and 8, Salakia. Alright, so if you receive the mark of the beast, okay, 
this is a good scripture. It says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mischief, okay, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, which the ICBM missiles, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the holy, in the land of the Lamb, okay? And that's Yahweh Shai, all right? So, um, the elites plan on enslaving the whole world, man. Mainly enslaving our people, Israel. This is geared towards us, man. Okay, but but he he, he don't know that he's gonna he gonna go into slave, which he he know. But I'm gonna put, I'm gonna bring the scripture out. Um, this is Revelations 13 and nine. It says, "If any man have an ear, let him hear." He that leaveth into captivity, which we in captivity today, okay, shall go into captivity. All right, so these at least going into captivity, man. Okay, so they know, they know they're going into slavery. You know what I'm saying? After Yahweh shall come back, okay. It says, he that killeth with the sword, which they great rob murdered, our people, okay, must be killed with the sword. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be common, man. Okay. All right, so we're going to do unto them they, what they're doing to us, man. All right, you say, must be killed to sword. Here's the, here is the patience and the faith of the saints, okay? Who is the saints? So-called blacks, lads, and Arab Americans, man, okay? To make up to the biblical Hebrew Israelites, not black Hebrew Israelites, okay? Hebrew Israelites, because it's a nation. It's a nationality, okay? It's not a, it's not a fucking group, okay? So these at least going to slavery, man. Okay, for that. Okay, bringing out the chip, chipping people, our people. Okay, he gonna chip his own people, which we don't care about them. Okay, these other nations, because he he's planning on enslaving the whole world, man. He's planning on depopulating to five hundred to five hundred million. Okay, that's that's his plan. You know what I'm saying? To uh to populate the generations of people. So the Lord is gonna come back and destroy him, man. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it, and uh, <clears throat> that's all I had to. Uh, that's all I have, right? You know what I'm saying? That's all I have. You know what I mean? But uh, that's really all. That's that's really that's pretty much it. You know, here you go right here. It says it's really it's it's um. Uh, is is this really the mark of the beast? All right. So it is according to the scriptures. All right. So with that, um, this is a short lesson, man. You know that was on my spirit, so I decided to bring it out. So with that, man, I like to say all praise and glory and honor. Kahalai, Havashimah, Shai, Bashim, Kakudash. You better stay strong, man. Shalom.